You're listening to XS Gaming Podcast, a podcast for gamers by gamers, with your hosts Xander Scullion and James Gruesome, bringing you something old, something new, and a little bit of nostalgia too. Hello, everyone, and good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, whichever time you guys are checking us out, and welcome to another episode of XS Gaming Podcast. We're recording this on October 3rd, 2016. I'm one of your hosts, Xander Scullion, and joined with me is my wonderful co-host, Mr. James Grusom. What's up, James? What's up, everybody? Somebody call Wisdom Tree, because we need a damn Noah's Ark with all this rain and flooding we've had around here. I hope you all are doing well, and uh, despite maybe the the poor taste in that, we have had some... uh, crazy flooding down in my area uh i was fine i had some friends that had a house that you know pretty much got ruined uh they weren't living in it but uh it was really a lot of damage down here like the worst thing in 50 years it was pretty nuts because i've never really seen any flooding stuff around here so anybody that got affected by that uh thoughts go out to you and especially this hurricane coming up Uh, A little bit worried because Mrs. Gruesome is actually down in Florida going to some shit at Disney World and the Spooky Empire and uh, just hope everything doesn't get too gnarly down there. But uh, other than that, everything's pretty cool and I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you all ready. We're just going to discuss politics and the presidential debate (laughs) whole episode. (laughs) Yeah, and before I get into that, because it's a nice little segue... Um, yeah, definitely anybody that lives on the East Coast, man, uh, definitely, um, you know, be prepared and, you know, have your batteries and your water. I know this is a gaming podcast, but we do have some serious weather coming our way, and I don't want to hear about anybody getting hurt or, you know, anything like that. So definitely prepare yourself, uh, gaming friends, because we're in for a doozy. Hopefully it won't be too bad. But, yeah, presidential debate. Uh, <laughs> this goes out to... Um, all because of a hat I made. Okay, I had a hat, and you can purchase this hat on an actual gaming website, but um, I made a Make Konami Great Again hat that was kind of like a spoof off of uh, Donald Trump's Make America Great Again hat, and um, I was going to order it from that website uh, that makes the, the hats, and it looks exactly like the hat I have, except it's not a trucker hat, it's a normal red hat, and it's got the Konami logo on the back, and I was trying to order it, and the website was down, like it just wasn't working, and I, w- I was kind of, I was a little tipsy that Saturday night, so I'm like, you know, I'm going to go on Amazon, and I put an Amazon, I'm like, make Konami great again hat, and I see all these red hats, I end up clicking on one, and I'm like, holy crap, this one's actually cheaper than the Konami hat, it's only like six bucks i want to pay the extra shipping to get it sooner and i woke up the next morning and found out that i actually ordered a donald trump hat <laughs> good <laughs> and you I'm gotta like, watch out with that drunk shopping man i mean it happens to us all it's a it's a simple mistake it happens you know <laughs> yeah yeah luckily you know i, I went ahead and canceled it because i was like you know i don't want this hat this is not what i wanted so i went ahead and canceled it and i didn't have to worry about it but i ended up going to the mall because my mom has a, uh, a, a hat embroidery place, and I got the hat made. And like I was telling you before the podcast, James, like some of the people when the hat was getting made, seeing that red hat and seeing just the word "make" in white font being stitched in, some people were just like stopping and just giving me my me and my you, girlfriend you, this look. You're like, either gonna get like the stink <laughs> eye, or you're gonna get like some thumbs up and high fives, man. That's either like 50, oh, 50 one way or the other, you know. Yeah, it was crazy, but I'd be like, no, it's, it's a Konami hat. Do I like, what's a Konami? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's it's a really fun hat. I'm gonna be wearing it um at Fable Comic Con, which is in about two weeks, and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. And James, from what I hear, you're you're gonna try to make it there as well. Man, I'm seriously thinking of going. I definitely want to go out and hang out with you because we hadn't chilled out in a, a long time, and a, a good friend of ours. Sean Long from uh, RGT85 and Nintendo mm-hmm. Enthusiast. He's having a panel on that Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, definitely anybody that follows his stuff, his videos, you know, good quality stuff, and he's got a really good sense of humor. Really cool dude. So I definitely want to try to, like I said, I'm going to try to fight my uh, loathing of massive amounts of people in one place to <laughs> actually go. Uh, I don't know, big crowd things are 
kind of kind of brutal for me but uh you know knowing some people going uh the fact that it's right here in town it'd be kind of lamer of me not to go so uh i'm definitely like i said i'm on that you know i think i said i was 80 i'm about like the 90 percent uh chance of going because i gotta see if i'm either gonna take off or i could just you know rush through the day and get off and i was joking with you about the pimp is way to show up but i'm like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah my mom to drop me off it's just you don't live too far from where it's at man and i hate trying to park in some big space and also my sister my nephews are going uh so i'm gonna try to get up with them and see what time they're going up there because i hadn't seen them in a long time either so you know see if i can knock out maybe visiting some family seeing some friends uh just checking out because last year it did so good i don't know if they had it in the smaller section like the civic center area and they're moving it but I, it's either been expanded to two days i think now yeah or a big area because it did so good last time uh it, it's really cool to have something like that in our town fayetteville being what it is mainly because it's near fort bragg uh, usually raleigh would be the one to get the bigger stuff so uh definitely good to think about supporting it just the fact that something like this does come to my town like i said it's kind of lamer if if i didn't go you know i just need to bite the bullet and hey it's a crowd you know is what it is and just go and have a good time man because at the end of the day i'm sure i'll have fun if i go so yeah definitely it's going to be on the 15th and 16th that saturday and sunday i'm going to be there uh saturday uh because i will be working i mean i've been working for past month been working like six days a week and you know i'm luckily i got this saturday off that saturday so I can go to that, and yeah, I mean, and big shout out to Sean Long as well. Uh, not only is he going to be having a panel, but big shout out to him as well because he did upload a video uh, about a week ago now about how to mod your PSP, and I mean, that's something I've been kind of wanting to do for years. I've had a PSP for a long time, but I've always been like kind of like, I don't know, it might be kind of hard, I'm not sure, but you know, they got the new firmware, the 6.60 uh, firmware update that makes it even easier i mean it's so easy to put custom firmware on it and to put your roms and um you know with this hurricane coming and uh, you know, my girlfriend she's an administrator for uh, a nursing home i i told her i was like i'm going to take your psp and i'm going to load it up with a bunch of ps1 games because that's like one of her favorite consoles i'm gonna put all the spire of the dragons and stuff like that because unfortunately if the hurricane hits she's gonna have to be on lockdown at that site so she has some video games to play, so big shout out to Sean for that. That was really, really awesome. And yeah, definitely everybody, like I said, RGT85, Nintendo enthusiast, dude is straight up cool and has got awesome video, uh, news breaking. He was one of the first ones I remember hearing about the uh, po uh, possible portable uh, like Turbo Graphics going to be coming oh, out. Yeah. Uh, he did a review of that latest Nintendo, the one that's like the HD uh, yeah, he did. He had that quite, you know, a lot before I've seen other people. And, and he's from North Carolina, too. So definitely got to support, you know, the local guys, but he's got really great stuff. So check him out. Yeah, and speaking of local, he did upload a video where he visited uh, uh, Mad Rabbit Studios, Limited slash Limited Run Studios, which is, um, if some of you guys are not familiar with Limited Run, that's uh, a company that takes indie games and make them into physical copies. And he actually went and got to visit the office because the office is in Cary, uh, North Carolina. It's you know right by Raleigh, so or in the Raleigh Triangle area. So I mean that that's really cool. Big shout out to him, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be nice to to meet him in person at Fayetteville, and of course uh, meet up with you, James, because you and I the last time we hung out was like three years ago when we my my old band played the Rock Shop. That was like. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it has, has been a long time. So it's funny. I mean, you know, we, we do the show. We uh, talk quite often, you know, through, like, texting and everything. Yeah. Uh, but there's nothing like just actually hanging out and physically seeing your friends sometimes, you know, and just laughing and having a good time. So Exactly. Now, with some of the video game news, uh, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot that's been going on. I mean, there's been some things going on, but not a whole lot that I've been like, oh, this is going to be a great excess gaming topic. So I have a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, first is the N64 emulator pulled from the Xbox One store. Okay, now this is uh, off of Eurogamer.net. It says the N64 emulator app for the Xbox One was released and then quickly removed from the console's marketplace. Uh, the app was called Win64E10, spread yesterday via Reddit, although it was actually launched quietly over the weekend. 
Now, this is all because of the new update that uh, Microsoft did for Xbox Live. And apparently, not only was there N64 emulator, but there was also a couple other ones, including uh, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Uh, people have been uploading it, and Microsoft's been quickly pulling it down just to you know, kind of save themselves from legal trouble. But, man, if you were lucky enough to download this app... I. I'm pretty sure you can still function it. I'm pretty sure you can play N64 games on your Xbox Live. That's pretty interesting, though. Yeah, that's nuts. I actually didn't know anything about that uh, until you said that. Uh, I, I didn't really think, you know, uh, programs or apps like that slipped out onto there. Uh, I, I think it's really cool because, you know, we fully support emulation, you know. Oh, yeah. Go for it. H- however you can play the game. and Man, that's just awesome, but I can definitely see why they pulled it because, you know, the big nasty end, man, they try oh, yeah. to, you know, come and shut you down. And like I said, hey, they're, they're within their rights. I don't necessarily always agree with it, but, you know, things like that happen. So Microsoft was uh, quite smart to go ahead and try to knock that out so they don't get blamed for it and catch a suit, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's really interesting. And, and, I mean, one day it would be great. It would be great to, you know, have – you know, emulators that you can download onto your consoles. I mean, it makes me think of the Ouya. I mean, that was the only reason why I got a Ouya was because I could download so many emulators and just play it on that little box. I'd just take that little box with me anywhere and boom, you know, you want to play some arcade games, you can play it right there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that kind of seems like that would be some of these companies, you know, somebody more like Sega would be somebody that would try to get behind that as far as, you know, getting more like Saturn stuff out there. Uh, they're one of the companies I could see, you know, yeah. uh, maybe getting, you know, they're, they're a little bit hipper, you know, like they were back in the day with the, the Sonic attitude. Maybe they should jump up on something like that because, uh, you know, there is the, the talks of that Saturn uh, EverDrive Ooh, coming yeah. out. I cannot uh, wait for that. You know, that's just going to be cool. And anything that I, I think that a company like that could get behind, uh, you know, put something into and actually get some money back from it in the process uh it, it's smart you know that's just smart business because people are going to do it anyway but if yeah. you can jump on it and make it a little bit easier a little bit more accessible to other people at a good price you know they're going to jump on that too so it's just a, a good way to go to you know go with the go with the times man exactly now uh hello games uh the makers behind no man's sky is under investigation for fa- false advertising um, this was a really big story last week. Um, here's the thing: like I've heard, I've had a lot of friends who played No Man's Sky. I've had a lot of people that loved it. Some people absolutely hated it. The main thing is, it was a lot of stuff that was being shown at E3 and at Sony press conferences and whatnot that showed No Man's Sky. And when it came out, it wasn't what they showed. And now they're getting trouble for it. Uh, you know, angry customers. You know, are feel like they're being criticized and you know this is very misleading this is something to me though that i i'm actually kind of kind of happy about because this has been a problem for a lot of AAA titles not just for no man's sky but if you guys remember Watch Dogs, when Watch Dogs was first announced and first shown back at e3 you know ubisoft got in trouble for using high-powered pc games and um, using that to show the game off. When the game came out, it was really dumbed down. And uh, I think this is a sign that you know a lot of AAA companies, and I know Hello Hello Games is not specifically a uh, AAA company, but this is to show that there really needs to be more integrity with advertising and gaming. You know, don't show us you know these green pastures and white picket fence, and we get there and. Uh, it's all a mirage. And it's, I'm... it's definitely about making a stand. You know, I'm, I'm like, you. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to see uh, these guys in particular get hit, but sometimes some people need to be made an example yeah. out of. Uh, and, you know, like you said, with some false advertising, like we don't want those people just need to be more upfront. And sometimes, you know, like I said, if something good can come out of it. I would kind of relate it to a presidential election uh, without getting into any of the politics of it. <laughs> Personally, if I go vote, I'm voting a third party. Now, I'm not voting for the third party candidate. I'm voting for the fact that I'm dissatisfied 
with the choices. I'm dissatisfied with always having only these two. And people say you can throw away your vote, but maybe if you wouldn't vote anyway and enough people who think they're just wasting a vote actually went out and voted for something else, you can at least make a small stand. And maybe that's yeah. kind of like what this is. It's making just a small stand against, hey, you know, you're just feeding us a bunch of crap. Like, I don't know about it. It's very polarizing, the fact that, I mean, I've heard more bad than good, but you're hearing about it. And that's not necessarily always a good thing when the majority of it is negative. And yeah. that just seemed, it's a game I, I was interested in. I was like, oh, this looks cool. But then you just keep hearing like, more and more negative i can't kind of help but uh lean that way i'm kind of curious now a little bit more to play it myself just to see what uh you know the whole big fuss about it is but more times now we just like to get the product you know uh, up front without all even you know as they throw in the dlc and things like that patches to fix bugs uh just be nice to have a little bit more kind of honesty in the whole gaming as it goes yeah, definitely, and uh, I mean, it's it. I, I brought up a good question, and it was just like a, a little question on the Excess Game Podcast group page on Facebook. I was like, because they were talking about maybe even pulling No Man's Sky off the shelves, and I'm like, could this be, you know, if it gets pulled off the shelves, could this be uh, later on down the, the road, like years from now? Could this be a rare game? The reason why I asked that is because... You know, that that sounds like the perfect recipe that, you know, in like 2030 or something like that, when someone's going for like a complete PS4 collection or something, and they're just like, yeah, No Man's Sky was a physical release. It can only be played online, but it was pulled off shelf. This is going to be something that had value. I, I, I always wonder those kind of things. I, I kind of try to, and maybe it's the collector in me, I try to wonder and and kind of strat- have a strategy you know, for later on down the road being like, you know what, this game, you know, didn't sell well. It was in a low production run. I'm not talking about No Man's Sky, but just giving an example. But I'm going to go ahead and buy it now, you know, because later on down the road, this game might be worth something. That's I mean, it just interesting to me in the fact that, you know, are there, you know, when you got to think about like 360, PS3, like, if you think about it, like, are there rare games on that now? I don't really know of, you know, uh, I don't know, 3D Dot Gaming Heroes. That's one I just, I don't really see used a whole lot. Is that one that's a little bit maybe harder to get? Like, what is a a list of games on these systems? Because we see it with PS2, you know, mm-hmm. even the, the Xbox, there's a few that can, you know, catch a bit of a higher price. Some are more rare. And you just don't really think of that, you know, coming from a bit more of the, the old retro scene with how many of those are high dollar don't think about many of the current generation ones being that way. But you're right with bringing up that question. Like, just what will be worth more yeah, later on on these systems? Because, I mean, if you really think about it, uh, no one no one thought that stadium events would be worth as much as it is today. You know, no one, no one thought that. I mean, when they took stadium events off the shelves, when uh, it got replaced with Bandai and all that stuff, or Nintendo, I should say... When it got replaced with all that stuff, like no one thought about that. I, I, I guarantee you, no one was like, "Oh man, I better just go ahead and put like sixteen of these, you know, in my closet and just keep them for a couple of years." Now, some people have, because some people may have, because they have been found uh, boxes of like rare games and stuff like that, still factory sealed that people have hold, held held to. But the the overall picture of it, I don't think a whole lot of people think about is this going to be an uncommon game? Is this going to be a rare game? And that brings up the the good questions like, is this going to be a rare or uncommon game? And, you know, think about the future. And if you're trying to go for a collection, maybe a complete collection, go ahead and get it now before someone makes a YouTube video and they're like, oh, this is a hidden gem. (laughs) Here's here's one too. (laughs) I wonder how will people look at games like we mentioned earlier, limited run games. Oh yeah. Uh, now my brother's told me he's looked up a couple of theirs and you know seen some of their early releases floating around for like a hundred bucks. Which I mean, you know they usually do runs of like twenty five hundred. Uh, Shadow Complex, for instance, was about double that because I think they were mm-hmm. just expecting more people. And I wonder will those games get included? You know when people are trying to 
collect a whole collection. There's these, you know, certain downloadable games that had that disc release. And uh, those are ones that'll, I just, I love the idea that uh, a lot of us love in the physical media and the fact that this company does that. Uh, we're just getting them just to actually have the physical game, you know, not really thinking yeah. like, oh, this is going to be worth money later on. But in the back of my mind now seeing it, it's like, man, I could definitely see some of these going for some serious high dollars, especially at runs of 2500 5000 That's not a lot at yeah. all. Yeah, and they, they sell out quick. I mean, I know buddies of mine that collect limited run games, and, you know, just just getting the pre-order is so – kind of be kind of tedious a little bit. I know one of my friends will be like, man, I'll wake up and, you know – get it as soon as it hits live because I want to make sure I get a copy because, I mean, it is limited run. You know, it does have a, a limited supply of it. So, unfortunately, a lot of people do, uh, you know, get them and try to flip them online and stuff like that. And that already happens, but... Yeah, it's just awesome, the fact, to, to get those. And, you know, I'd yeah. like to see more companies, you know, even Nintendo, if they even did that themselves with some of these, you know, like... Uh, we shop store uh, some of the games on that even if they produced them it's just a, a lot of places could get in on these things and uh you know it, it'd help out because it'd be like a bigger company behind it maybe make a bit more available but still keep it limited more people could get them uh somehow you know this company like got in on that and i think that was really smart and more than being smart is really cool you know yeah. yeah it's awesome now speaking of cool before we go on our break, I did want to talk about a special edition that's going to be coming out that I am really excited about because I've been really wanting to get into this series because this is a series that you've talked about, James, since we started this podcast, and that was the announcement of the Yakuza Zero, which is the prequel to the original Yakuza. It's coming out for the PS4 in January. Just got confirmed to have a business card edition, a limited launch edition that includes a stainless steel business card holder and bonus uh, three cards. That's freaking awesome. You know, it, we've seen, like, you know, bigger and better special editions before, but the fact that this is just getting one at all. I know in Japan... They've done uh, the Sega Addicts podcast that I'd listened to for a long time. Uh, they had gotten a hold one time, and they'd had a couple contests where they were giving away some of the uh, swag they'd gotten from over there, like cufflinks and different things. So they've, so cool. they've always done things over in Japan, but this time to actually get something over here at all, I'm just kind of you know happy and excited in general. You know, it's something. And of course, I'm going to get it, and of course, I want to get. You know, this edition, and I don't think it's going to be one of those, you know, absurd $100 amounts. I think it's just a regular reserve. Uh, granted, I would fork over the money for some really cool, super special edition. But you were telling me about something else that was really cool over in Japan that was coming out. Yeah, there they have a uh, actual Yakuza Slim PS4 console. They have a black one and they have a white one with the, you know, the dragon on it. And it looks so cool. And I was just like, man, I would love for this to come out in the U.S. If it came out in the U.S., I'd like that would be that would have to be the PS4 you get. Yeah, now wouldn't that just be so perfect? And it would. To, sh to show you how big Yakuza is, you know, them having this. They've done this before with the PS3, uh, and they may have had a early run of PS4. I don't, I don't think so. With them doing this, this is probably the first PS4. But PS3 had a run. And that just goes to show you uh, how big games are when we get systems those over here. Call of Duty, Halos, uh, even a Star Wars one, you know, a little bit more limited. But those are like top tier games that sell, uh, you know, huge amounts. And that just goes to show you in Japan how big this game is over there that they dedicate, you know, a whole system to its design. Uh, it's something I would definitely think more about getting, uh, you know, I don't know if the systems now are backwards compatible with uh, region free. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. It is region free. Uh, I just think that would still just the whole interface of everything would just be uh, still a bit too confusing for me. But uh, yeah, I just like the fact that it's out and at least the people in Japan, you know, can get that. And it's just more love. Anything more more love coming towards you yeah, because of the fact that we're getting zero at all on physical format. Uh, I couldn't, I, I can't complain at all just having that. So I'm, I'm thankful for what we get and the special business edition. 
I will definitely be picking that up. For what I understand, it's just you know your normal pre-order. If you pre-order it, uh, you get that. So anybody that's thinking about checking out the series, Zero, it's a prequel. Perfect place to start. Get some extra free crap with it. Uh, just check it out. It is just the most badass game ever. That that's definitely what I'm going to do because I mean I mean I'm also getting a special edition just because I I really want to support it because I would love it, something I would really love to happen is you know Sega sees that you know the game sells well and people got the special editions that shows that you know the the North American audience is really in the West is really pushing for this and we can get like you know HD remaster of Yakuza One. You know, maybe a Yakuza collection where you get the the first, like, maybe, like, three in, like, a nice little collector set, you know. I would love that. I mean, that's that's one series I would like to have an HD remaster because I haven't had a chance to actually experience it. And I would love to experience it in, like, high definition and high quality. That would just be great. Yeah. And the ease of getting it, uh, you know, they've had the some HD versions come out in Japan. Uh, I know one time there was rumors of the first one on the Wii U. I don't know if that one actually came out, but PS3 or the, yeah, the PS3 definitely did. And it's just one, you know, like I said, one's pretty easy to get Two definitely a bit harder, but so many people now, sometimes, you know, they don't have their PS2s anymore. And just that ease of playing it all in one collection, uh, you know, disc preferably, but even if they did some download stuff, uh, just to get it in more people's hands and say, hey, maybe more people try it out because it really is great. And for all my Let's Players out there that are listening that are getting Yakuza 0, please do me a favor and stream that game as well because, I mean, if you can stream it and introduce more people to the series, it would be awesome. And that's another, I, I, that's another I thing. I should stream that. It's yes, a, yes, you should. It's kind of easy to stream on PS4 since I'm so awesome at it. Uh, that's one game I would definitely just because I love playing it and Maybe even just like a couple eyes see it and it's like, ah, oh, hey, that's pretty awesome. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I like that accessibility uh, of more to people where it's easier for people to stream and maybe give other people a chance to see, you know, new games they wouldn't have tried. Exactly. And uh, speaking of trying out games, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, shoot 'em ups, shmups, shooters, whatever you guys want to talk about, uh, wherever you want to call the genre. But we're going to be talking about some of our favorite games. And also, I did a little contest, a little poll on the Access Game Podcast group page. I did Truxton versus Musha. And man, it was bottleneck to bottleneck. And I'm going to read the results for that as well, and maybe some of people's comments. But sit back, relax, guys, listen to some Musha music. And we'll be right back.
And we are back, guys, and that was some music from Musha. Uh, probably one of the best shooters on the Sega Genesis. Actually, I had a little questionnaire on uh, a poll question on the XS Game Podcast group page. And I was doing a competition on which one's a better game, Truxton or Musha. And let's not get it twisted. There's a lot of great shooters on the Sega Genesis, and we'll definitely be talking about that. The reason why I was using those two as examples is because a buddy of mine, John, uh, getting through the decades, he got Truxton, and he had just ordered Musha, and he hadn't played either one of them. And all of us, uh, you know, me, John, uh, my friend Jason, like Black Metal Gamer, Justin, Down Phoenix, uh, Chris, Bio Phoenix, all of us, we, we talk a lot on Facebook. And we were like going to see which one that John liked better, you know, because he hadn't played either one of them. And um, it turned out he liked Truxton. And Truxton actually won the Excess Gaming poll by one vote. It was 12 wow. to 13. I mean, it was bottleneck. And I was like, man, this is going to be a tie. But. It won by 13 votes. Uh, Musha got 12, but both really, really fantastic games. And uh, how do you refer to these games, James? Because I, you know, a lot of people call them shooters. I call them shooters. Uh, I didn't really start hearing the term shmups until about, I don't know, like 2009, 2008, when the first person shooter genre got started getting really popular. It was like, I guess people don't want to get confused with Call of Duty and Ikaruga. So they were like, oh, this is a shmup. This is a shooter. What do you call it? I, you know, probably it's kind of funny when you you ask that now. It's kind of like, what did I call them? I, I probably just called them like a shoot 'em up. Uh, yeah. You know, we'd probably be like, oh, you know, like a Gradius kind of shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like Gradius or Life Force, some of the, the earlier games we played like that. But I can see how calling them a shoot 'em up would kind of, you know, morph into shmup. Uh, but that one, yeah, shooter, it all kind of follows on. Even when, you know, you'd mentioned to me about the topic, because I, I had asked you, I was like, uh, what exactly? You know, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. You know, I was like, we got our Gradius Life Force, or is this stuff like Contra and things too? We kind of both mutually came to the conclusion that it's uh, games with, you know, lots of bullets, and you're kind of going in one way, and there's no jump. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like an on-rail path that you constantly have to go. And, yeah, like Contra, Contra is like more the lines of like a running gun. You know, like Contra, Metal Slug, you know, games like that. But, I mean, you also can consider games like Ikari Warriors or Total Carnage or Smash TV as kind of a shooter as well because those, especially Ikari Warriors, constantly scroll up, you know, and you have to sit there and keep on shooting and shooting and shooting. So it, it, it is kind of interesting. I will say that one reason why I love this genre so much is because it was related to the first video game I ever played. Uh, first game I ever played ever was Missile Command. And in my opinion, Missile Command is is a shooter. It's not a bullet hell or it's not a on rails. But, I mean, that was the early video games. Early video games, like, you know, you controlled a spaceship and you shot things down, you know? Yeah, you I mean, you hear from way, way back, you know, like late 70s, early 80s, the games like Space War. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the very first to be thrown in that category, Space Invaders, uh, kind of put in there as like the big granddaddy of them all. And, you know, it's not even one I may not necessarily think of, you know, in that way, but it still helped birth it to your Galaxians, Tempests, uh, Exevious. Oh, uh, yeah. A, a lot of these early ones. And then, you know, one of the ones that stands out to me, uh, just as far as playing them, early and standing out memorable was uh gradius or gradius or whatever you want to call it uh that was the one that just kind of imprinted on my mind and that one kind of really set the standard to me of kind of what that genre is at the end of it you know like we said it's kind of open to interpretation of what your definition of a shooter shoot 'em up or shmup is that's the kind of cool thing about it you know uh, i'm sure people could argue like oh this one is or this one isn't it's kind of like whatever you want it to be and uh and what sticks out but i mean gradius just you know the power-ups the easter island heads the little cheerios floating around <laughs> that <laughs> that was just kind of the standard setter for me yeah i mean here's a good question for you james because um 
you brought up a good topic when you mentioned uh, Gradius or Gradius. Um, that's kind of like Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden. Tomato, tomato. Um, do you prefer shooters that are vertical or horizontal? Uh, I Vertical. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second, which one's which. Uh, overall, I'm going to go with vertical. Uh, th- wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. I take that back. See, I got confused. Horizontal. Uh, oh, yeah. Side to side. That's the one. I like it when they mix up a little bit, when you get a little bit of both. But overall, uh, I, I just I like the horizontal view. You know, it kind of goes back. It goes back to Gradius. You know, it's that that view. Uh, it's just that's that's to me what what kind of encompasses it. But I, I do like a mixture. You know, I can't knock it. There's some great vertical. Uh, and when you throw them together, that's that's the best combination, really. Yeah, see, I like I like horizontal shooters, and I was talking about this with Down Phoenix. Uh, we were talking about vertical or horizontal, and I like horizontal for the same reason that he mentioned. I feel like you have a little bit more real estate to move around. You have a little bit more control, and especially you know for like bullet hells um, and like the shoot 'em ups, they they all have their own little genres as well. Like the bullet hell shooters, of course, are the ones that are completely crazy. They just have bullets going everywhere, and you're just you know shooting as much as you can. Horizontal uh, bullet hells are easier for me than the horizontal ones because I feel like I can kind of move around. A uh, great example would be games like uh, Jamestown on PS4. I keep on wanting to call it Jonestown. <laughs> but uh, Jamestown... Named after me. <laughs> but uh, Jamestown is an excellent bullet hell shooter uh, that you can get on PSN. And yeah, it's a bullet hell. And I, I don't know what it is. that the The shooting genre in that style is became one of my favorite genres in video games because they're quick they're easy you can pick them up you can play it for either you know three hours or five minutes and you get just as much of a satisfaction that other than maybe like fighting genre or maybe like a platformer i don't really get that satisfaction from you know i, I would say maybe easy to pick yeah up play yeah. maybe not easy as far as in difficulty i, I kind of figure I'm probably a lot of people do this the same way. Uh, when I play uh, a schmop or shooter or bullet hell or you know wh- whatever they are, uh, you kind of gotta kind of let's see what's the word I'm thinking of. Kind of gotta let yourself go. You kind of focus, but don't focus. You get in a weird you, trance. Yeah, you kind of gotta drift off to where you're not full down and focusing, paying attention, but it's this little midway point where you kind of drift <laughs> off and you let control of your senses yeah and something else kind of takes over and you're able to maneuver and go around it's it's a it's a very weird intense sometimes zen like yes. state of mind that you have to get into i was just about to say it is almost like a zen it almost like unlocks a, a secret chemical in your brain or something i mean it just kind of What's your third eye? Yeah, it's like you're the viewing. It's almost like you're looking through your like peripherals almost. Yeah, you know, you're just kind of yeah. just staring at it, and you're just like in this little trance. And I mean, yeah, I will, that's maybe another reason why I find it so relaxing because I can kind of just let loose and just kind of not think and just shoot things. You know, when I'm playing RBG, I gotta you know think about my party. I gotta be like, oh, I need to level this person up. I need to do this story. And I mean, a lot of bullet hells do have story to them um some of them have more than others uh, but i it's one of my favorite genres I, I definitely want to talk about some of my favorites um when i think of shoot 'em ups one game i love to talk about of course is, is ikaruga uh ikaruga for the the gamecube and the dreamcast it was also released on xbox live and i believe psn but what makes this game really unique it's a vertical shooter and it's a bullet hell but your spaceship can switch from black and white and the enemies are black and white and you're kind of switching back and forth because you know if you're a white ship you do more damage on on the black uh enemies or on you know vice versa and it adds adds a little more of a strategy to it especially when you start getting in later stages and everything just starts getting really really crazy and you're flip-flopping into shooting everything Man, that's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, you definitely, there's just like an extra zone, as we were saying earlier, when you do this one, because the, you know, when you're one color, you know, the opposite color bullets will hurt you. And then when you switch back, Mm -hmm. it's like the other ones won't. So, you know, you're moving, you're ducking, you're dodging, you're switching colors. You know, you got to take, is there more bullets of this color? Can I absorb those? Definitely. You know, strategy is a big part on a, a lot of these games. And that one just adds more to it but the games like this it just kind of seems like no matter what they throw at you it can seem like you know that term bullet hell like the bullets just from everywhere but you're still able to just kind of like you said get in that zone and go through it and i mean ikaruga was difficult but man that was just a a really amazing one one of the best games in that genre of, of that decade for sure uh, a standout you know when you think of those titles especially from that era the gamecube ikaruga uh, that was the system i played it on first just man it's a standout it's just an uh, outstanding game yeah and one one thing i will say too is um a console that i think that has some of the best shooters is actually the uh Turbo graphics and pc engine like uh, it's funny because the Neo Geo is like the the fighting, the fighting genre console. I mean, they had so many fighters, and they had a lot of shooters too. But it was just like the PC Engine. I mean, had so many great bullet hells and uh, shooters, and also uh, you know talking about another genre that I really like is the 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 cutesy uh, cute em ups. Cute, yeah, cute em ups. Oh man, like uh, Pocky and Rocky. That's an excellent shooter. And also, um, Parodius. Uh, Parodius was really interesting because you could actually play as the PC engine. And you would sit there and you get power ups and you'd shoot CDs. And the reason why, of course, it's called a, a cute em up is because all the characters are real chibi. They're real cute. The music's really upbeat. Sometimes you just have a really annoying, you know, like Asian would, girl, like yeah, Asian I girl would, in the background, you know? I would throw one of the, one of the earlier titles. To me, that falls a little bit more in the cute them up uh, fantasy zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, just yeah, it, it just that, that you know, it just has that look. If you know what a cute them up is, which I'm sure all y'all listening do, uh, it's one of those early ones that just it, it it hits that. It's just bright. It's colorful. It's just it, uh, it exemplifies fun uh, in this genre. Just the look of it and. One of the games I like a lot. It's it's a uh, it came out in two thousand two. It uh, came out on PSP. Uh, it's also on Xbox Live, uh, PSN. Uh, I had the PSP version of a game called Platypus. Oh yeah, and uh, this one was uh, you know done with actually done with claymation. And when you play it, it has a very clay look. And uh, you know looking up on it, the guy used that. You know he, he did it with claymation. It was done by. Uh, I don't have his name, but, you know, one main guy that it worked on it. And just, man, it's just everything. I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, claymation effects. I love the California Raisins, you know. They're awesome. <laughs> a California Raisin shoot up would be <laughs> interesting. That would have been better than what they, <laughs> they made on the Nintendo. But uh, Platypus is a great one. It's available in many different formats. It's just, it's fun. It's cute. It's... You know, it kind of sounds silly to describe it like that, but that's how it is. They're a little bit more, to me, the cute em ups, uh, while they still can be tough, they're just a little bit more laid back. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more relaxing. Now, it was funny because when I was mentioning Truxton and Musha in that poll, a lot of people were talking about a lot of the Sega Genesis shooters like Thunder Force and, and whatnot. And yeah, the Genesis, in my opinion, Genesis had a lot more shooters than the Super Nintendo did. I mean, Super Nintendo had a couple, but uh, some Genesis shooters that I definitely would recommend. Uh, one would be one that I don't hear enough people talk about, and it is Aero Flash. Aero Flash was awesome because you could control the ship, but you would also push another button and you would change into a mech, and you could switch, and uh, it would add some diversity to your attack tactics you know, going through from stage to stage. And that that was a game that was like, you know, when all of us, uh, my friends were talking on Facebook and we were all talking about shooters. And I was just like, have you guys ever played Aero Flash? They're like, no. I'm like, go download it. And they, you know, they play it and they're like, this is awesome. 
it is such a good game. Yeah, that one's. I, I had the cart of that one, and uh, as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, I remember playing that. That one was very cool. I, I do want to say too. I, I was looking. I was like, I'm gonna play a little bit of Musha, and uh, I was on my uh, Super NES ROMs, and, and there's a game called Misha <laughs> that I ended up playing. It's actually a samurai game, so uh, don't get those <laughs> mixed up. They're completely different. Uh, Speaking of the Turbo Graphics, uh, this is one on my list. I had near the end, but since we're talking about it, Air Zonk. Oh yeah, this is one I didn't play until really just a couple months ago when I got it. My brother giving it to me because he'd got the uh, PC Engine version, and I'd put it under the the queued em up. You know, it just man, the Hudson had some very just fun graphics and. This game, of course, is kind of related to Bonk. They were trying to do a little bit of an upgrade, a little bit more hipness. You know, he had a mohawk, a little bit more kind of little punky guy. But he was robotic, Zonk. too. Yeah, and they had King Drool. He was in this game, so, you know, I had some throwbacks to the Bonk. But, uh, man, as you play it, you know, you collect these smiley faces, and the different smiley faces kind of levels up, and then you'll get a partner, uh, it's kind of like another just big thing flying with you. And they vary on what you get. And then you collect more smiley faces and then you morph together with this. So at one point I'm flying and I have a giant missile just alongside me fighting. Like, I thought he was an enemy at first. Yeah. I was like, oh, God, like, what? Is like, oh, no, he's a friend. I'm like, <laughs> great. So you just go through it. I mean, it almost uh, kind of a good way to describe it. It's like a, a shooter mixed. It has a, a very Mega Man look to it. Mm-hmm. As far as the uh, robots, very like cartoony, where they have a little bit of personality with them, and uh, just an amazing game. One that you know, getting to play many years later after it came out, and it's it's definitely one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite Turbo Graphics games, and uh, you know whether you can download this or get it, it's a little bit more expensive title, and it's one after playing it, I can kind of I, I kind of understand because it is really good. Uh, it, it's one. Everybody should check out. It's pretty accessible. I don't think it's as hard as a lot of these games are. Like I said, being a cute em up is just a little bit more laid back. And if you like this genre at all, you're just you're guaranteed a good time with Air Zonk. Yeah, I remember when you texted me when you played that. I was like, oh, man, that's such a good game. It's so good. It is. <laughs> it really is. And, uh, yeah, I remember when you were talking about how like you would have uh, like friends, like companionships that would help you out. I hated those games that you'd have the companionships and it wouldn't have friendly fire, and you could still destroy the ship that's helping you out. Uh, uh. <laughs> like like some games did that, and I used to just piss me off so much. And still, like one shooter that's uh, just really hard that I'm just not good at, but I still love it is uh, Life Force. Ah, uh, yes, That's that a is one of the game. ones on my list. Uh, I was just playing that. Even with the, I, I think I burned up almost uh, 30 men in the first stage. Uh, I realized that. I used to be really good at it, and later in life, I realized I'm terrible at it. Uh, we kind of felt, uh, me and my friends as a kid, that it was kind of a, a sequel to Contra, uh, that's how we viewed it. We knew it wasn't. Uh, to me, you know, for everything I'd read, it was kind of a, a pseudo sequel to uh, Gradius because we didn't get Gradius two in the in the U.S. And Life Force just in general has a very very convoluted history as far as the uh, arcade version being Salamander. Uh, yeah, Life Force being a version of Salamander in Japan, and then when it went to the Famicom, it took elements of Life Force and Salamander and then we kind of pretty much got the same version the Japanese one had a couple more endings but it switched between vertical and horizontal uh, you know you just had giant huge enemies you kind of like went inside of something else with the kind of like little biomechanical vibe which is you know kind of like Contra with going inside of the alien uh, they just they seemed very very similar to me but uh, man, Life Force is just you know two players. If I don't know, I still think it's one of the best ones to try out. Like if you're a fan of Contra, uh, 
man, Life Force, it just, it, it kind of feel like they're in the same universe. Uh, both can be very difficult, but I think using the 30 min code over time and just kind of learning and practicing will automatically make you better. But, uh, man, just for co-op games on the NES, still, that, that's another one of my top ones, just in that category, too. And it's played best with the NES Advantage. Like, it just feels perfect. That was That's another thing about those games. Like, I love playing them with the arcade, with the arcade stick. That's one reason why I have a lot of arcade sticks, is because, not just for fighters, but I like them for, for shooters. Like, I have a Xbox 360 uh, arcade stick, and I have to say, I've probably used that arcade stick more with emulation, playing, you know, Neo Geo shooters or something on the PC Engine or Turbo Graphics, and I did actually like for fighting games. It just yeah. adds, it just adds that you know authentic kind of feel to it. I mean, something is really nice about using the joystick and that button and like just mashing it a, a thousand times. And some of the games, you know, you just hold that button down and you just move back and forth and get everything. It's so satisfying. Uh, one game I do want to mention on the PC Engine, it, w- it wasn't released in America. That's probably the weirdest shooter I've played. I mean, there's a lot of weird shooters. <laughs> this one, gonna say. this one is called Toilet Boys. Oh, I didn't know what you were going to say. Never mind. I, I think I knew. I, I think I knew which one you were thinking about, and you can talk about that one. But this one's called Toilet Boys. It starts off with a little boy, and he's like getting up in the middle of the night, and he's got to go to the bathroom. So, like, the game actually starts off with him opening up the door and pulling his pants down, sitting on the toilet, and getting sucked in the toilet, and you're in this world and you're on your the boy is on a toilet like a, a spaceship toilet and he's shooting down like because uh, you can either shoot straight forward or you can actually use another button to shoot uh, enemies that were on land like you would have turtles that have like poo shells like instead of turtle shells it'd be like poo and you sit there and shoot those down and like there would be spiders with butts that you had to shoot. I mean, <laughs> this game sounds like a Newgrounds from like the early 2000s. It sounds like a Newgrounds Flash game, but it was legit. It was Toilet Boys, and I've wanted to do a Let's Play of it for so long, but the game is so incredibly difficult. It's a really difficult game, but it's it's weird. But I think I know what game you were going to talk about. What game were you going to mention? Oh, the very, very homoerotic Choaniki. <laughs> 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 yes, the one that's got like the, the the real buff guys and they flex and like you know the ambiguously gay duo uh, almost. Yeah, just a very you know you got the very big muscled up guys and their little bikini briefs. Uh, just the backgrounds, the enemies. It's just weird. And it now is. that you talking about the the toilet bowl boys, like I, I wonder if you know the same person was behind both of these games because. Uh, Choaniki is just odd. I mean, you know, it's it's definitely worth it to play. It's just it, it's funny and it's just uh, it's out there. Sometimes you gotta appreciate Japan for just that. Uh, like, what the hell was going on when you know whoever decided to make this game? It's insane. It's like, yeah, it's like you got like a guy that does questionable things with a bowling pin and starts like shooting out fire at you or some weird shit like that. Yeah, it's just really weird. <laughs> it's so awesome. fun. Uh, another one, as we kind of got into the, you know, about the differences, is so many of these take places in, in spaceships. So we mentioned the Akari mm-hmm. Warriors games like Commando. Uh, one I'm a really big fan of is Gunsmoke or Gun Dot Smoke. Uh, oh, yeah. Konami, it was an arcade also on the NES. It's going to be on the uh, Retro Bit Generations coming out. Uh, top down, you know, old west. You're trying to, you know, rescue the town. The plot differs from the NES to the arcade. You're trying to help out. I think it's Hicksville or Hickstown. Uh, you know, uh, above view, but as you're scrolling up the screen, you kind of you shoot diagonally with the B and the A. You either go left or right, so you don't have a straight on shot. So you kind of got to strategically move around. And you can get other weapons, a shotgun, more powerful, uh, you know, different range of machine gun. Uh, there's certain townspeople you can stop along the way and actually buy, you know, uh, extra lives, extra ammo, uh, extra weapons. You get on a horse. Uh, it's just, it's a lot, to me, it's a lot like Commando, uh, which I think more people have played, but it has that 
Western vibe to it. Uh, so if you're into that, that's just a it's a really good classic one that I found out about later on. I didn't play it uh, at all from what I remember as a kid, and I remember playing it on like some you know bootleg family carts and you know different ROMs and stuff. And it's one that it just uh, I really got sucked into it, and I was like you know pretty involved and really wanted to keep playing. And it's one that I go back to now. Uh, so it, it really was a, a good classic and one that uh, kind of hate I missed out on, you know, as a kid. Yeah, and you brought up a good point when I was, when I started hearing about how you know you could talk to villagers or have them help you and stuff. Some of the shooters had kind of like that RPG kind of feel to it, or customization, I should say. Like a good example would be games like uh, Lords of Thunder uh, for the the turbo graphics pc engine sega cd <clears throat> and also um games like uh UN squadron for the super nintendo and arcade you know you would sit there and you go through stage to stage and you would like in between stages you'd visit like a little shop and you'd like spin credits but like, oh i want to boost up my rockets i want to boost up my bombs and i always kind of like that because you could play it differently you didn't have to always play the games the same way lords of thunder was a, a great example of that because each you know little character you would choose like little mech dude would be like they would have different um shooting patterns so you'd go with that and that was a lot of fun i enjoyed i enjoyed lords of thunder or, or uh gates of thunder was the first one and uh you and squadron also forgotten worlds forgotten world is like a forgotten game that not a lot of people talk about it was very similar to swat on the nes where you were controlling like this floating guy but what made this interesting is you would actually move uh with you would move with one button and move with the joystick with the other guy and the dude would actually go complete 360 like vertically like it was a it was a vertical shooter and he would actually spin so you could like be spinning and shooting like uh these this parade of bullets and that was a really fun game. Oh wow. You know, I wanna say the the one you mentioned, uh Gates of Thunder, I think they were uh some of the same guys that worked on Air Zonk, if mm -hmm. I remember right from what I was reading. Just Great soundtrack saw... too. Yeah. Uh, another game just have to mention just on the uh iconicness of it would be R Type. Oh yeah. I mean just if anything for that one boss, I think you know his name, right? Uh, it's slipping my mind. <laughs> we all know that one, but uh you know, very uh HR Geiger alien inspired uh game and just another one, you know, it wasn't on the Konami or anything, you know, it was Irem the makers of kung fu and uh it's just to me it's one of those ones along with uh gradius and life force that just you, you gotta put up there in the upper echelon of the titles and another one to me that's a little bit more cute em up it's another uh game i played fairly recently for the first time from what i remember is gun knack on the nes huh. uh I haven't played that one. No, dude, it's it's really cool. It's and uh, it's an overhead one. Definitely got that cute feel. Uh, you know, you got your weapons, you got your sub weapons. Uh, it's like some little was it like a little cat or mice? Uh, just these weird like moon faces and craters. Uh, you know, it's one. It just it it really stuck with me. Uh, you, you really need to try it out, man. It's just uh, it's definitely fun. It's still tough. Like I only made it up to the, I think I got to the second or third stage. So it's almost that in between between laid back cut 'em up and just your regular shooter. So I, I think if I wasn't looking at all the cute things in the background, I might have been like a bit, done a little bit better at it. Yeah, yeah, I would have to check that out because I never actually heard of it. I need to play that. Yeah, Gun Neck, and, and then another real quick one too that I got was uh, it's a Famicom only. It's available on the 3DS. It's a uh, I want to say maybe it's Summer Carnival Reka '92 or either Carnival Reka '92. Uh, another Japan only. Uh, just I, I don't know. You know, I, I didn't play it the most, but what I played, it, it was really good and uh, just another interesting one that we never got. Yeah, and also uh, when you mentioned R Type, made me think of another really good shooter that was actually put out by SquareSoft, and it was on the PS One as uh, Iron Iron Hander. 
It's uh, it's very R type like. It's you know very three D polygon, but it's a vertical shooter, and it's got some like little parts that makes it kind of horizontal when it's like switching in between different things. Cause it's got its own like little in game cutscene kind of stuff. Really interesting soundtrack. The graphic style makes you think of Blade Runner, and that's one of the things I really like about it. Cause it's got that you know steampunk post apocalyptic you know technology world kind of like. You know, Snatcher or you know, Blade Blade Runner. It's got that look to it, or like uh, what was that? Like Babylon, not Babylon Five. I'm thinking maybe like Fifth Element. You know, where, where it's like futuristic billboards for like Coca Cola and stuff like that. It's really cool. I like that game. It's pretty difficult, but it's definitely something to check out. And surprisingly, uh, a really good way to play shooters is mobile. Uh, the iPhone. Um, has tons of shooters. Uh, a great company that makes shoot 'em ups that are just phenomenal is uh, Treasure. Treasure, or actually, no, not Treasure, Cave. Cave makes really good shoot 'em ups. Uh, one of my favorites is actually Bug Princess. It's uh, where you control the little ship and you're just shooting all these um, bugs, like these huge cockroaches and bees and stuff like that. And it's, it's just got that bullet hell feel to it because, I mean, you got hordes and hordes of bullets full of power-ups and i mean you can download it for free for like the light version like the demo version on uh the iphone and maybe the maybe the android now but even then i think it's cheap what's really nice about it is it does really utilize the touch screen because you know you control the ship with your finger it's constantly firing so it's just i don't know it's one of those games that you know, when I hear a lot of people talk about mobile gaming, I'm like, you know, mobile gaming's not necessarily all that bad because you got games like Bug Princess. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we still got the Sega you know, one we didn't mention was the uh, Darius series on the Super oh, NES. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and in Turbo Graphics, like Darius I, was on there as well. I had a game a uh, friend had given me called uh, Supernova. And I was like, Supernova, this is a. It's never heard of this. And it's actually one that's in the Darius series. And another one just for weirdest cover art it always falls under is the game Phalanx. With mm. uh, that weird old Santa Claus looking dude with like a banjo or something. On the yeah. Side. What the hell is that? Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name. There's a Super Nintendo game, a shooter, that was actually developed by Toho. Um, the guys behind Godzilla. Uh, let me look that up real quick because that name is the name of the game's really slipping my mind. And people that are listening are probably like, "Oh, I know exactly what he's talking about." But it's a really interesting game, and I think a lot of um, let's see, Super Super Alest. There you go, Super Alest for the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was actually you know published by Toho in 1992 as a vertical shooter. And a lot of the LS games, uh, you know, Musha was actually one of them. Uh, it was called Super Mega Force in North America. But, uh, you know, you had Robo LS on the Sega CD. I mean, all these games were really, really good. They had like they always had, like, really nice heavy metal soundtracks. And, you know, it used a lot of the Mode 7 on the Super Nintendo, which was very interesting uh, because, like I said, there weren't a whole lot of shooters on the Super Nintendo because I don't think the Super Nintendo could handle... As much as the Sega Genesis when it came like the fast paced bullet action. I just don't think it could do that. What was that one game that was the pack in with the Sega C D? Uh it was like it started with an S. It was like um uh, Silphied. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was another good game. That was a that was also a game that they really utilized a lot of uh three D like polygon stuff too. I remember that. Yeah, there is there's just so many there's and they did quite a few remakes, some of the Super NES ones on the GBA. And, uh, you know, it probably had some of its own. Uh, it was a lot of, when they mixed it in, Guardian Legend, even the old uh, NES game, had a bit of shooter thrown in with it because I was playing it. It is very, very hard. I uh, didn't get past that part. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, before we get into games we've been playing recently, I want to, this is something I've been kind of liking doing. Um, I mean, other than failing at speaking English, <laughs> failing at doing, um, I, I'm going to ask you, James, to pick five shooters 
off the top of your head. Doesn't matter what console it is. Cause I remember last time I put you on the spot. We were talking about Dreamcast and Super Nintendo. It can be any console, but pick five shooters that you would recommend to somebody. I mean, I'm probably going to go on the ones I, I talked about. Uh, Life Force, Gun Neck, Gunsmoke, Platypus, and Air Zonk. Oh, nice. Mine, mine would be uh, Truxton. I actually voted Truxton over Musha. I still love Musha, but I'm going to say Truxton, uh, Aeroflash, um, Ikaruga, Under Defeat for the Dreamcast, and uh, Mars Matrix, which was also a really good Dreamcast shooter. And Dreamcast also had a lot of great shooters, too. Um, uh, honorable mention would be Gumbird, too. I mean, oh, yeah, them, like the Raiden, some of those games on the mm-hmm. Saturn, too, as well. Sega's yeah. just Radiant Silver Gun. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, Sega just always seems to kind of stand out and excel with those, like no matter what system they're on. I think it's all because Sega was, you know, it was just such an arcade company to begin with. You know, it's kind of like, that's what we do. You know, it's like when you go to an Italian restaurant and you get like spaghetti and meatballs, they're like, that's what we do. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we do. All right, so let's get into games we've been playing recently. James, what have you been playing recently? Uh, I played a little bit here and there i'd gone on a trip i went to the mothman festival in uh west virginia so i was out of town for a little bit uh went to go see a show saw some friends play argyle goolsby in the hollow bodies and the big bad and mumula uh mumula is a very uh kind of surf rock uh really cool uh it was just a, a good time a lot of people and had some car trouble on the way back home, and that was just all kind of brutal. But, you know, made it back. Uh, mainly, I played a little bit of uh, Rumble Roses I would picked up on the 360 not too long ago. And I thought I used to have this game, but I, I think that was a different one because it did not seem familiar at all. And, uh, you know, it's very, it, you know, it's kind of silly, kind of like your, your dead or alive volleyball games where you could zoom in on the chicks and uh yeah you know spank them at the end of the match and stuff like that but uh it's kind of a fun arcadey kind of a mixture between a, a fighter and a wrestling game so at, at, at the heart of it i actually kind of like it you know it's a little different than some of the other ones uh i picked up narc on the ps2 uh, I had this game when it came out back in 05. You know, it's voiced by Michael Madsen and uh, Bill Bellamy. And uh, <laughs> during that Grand Theft Auto time, when you had a lot of kind of clones of that uh, game. You know, you, you can uh, confiscate drugs off of uh, the perps, and you can take all of them if you want. And they all do different things. You can you know, take the marijuanas and it like Cypress Hill will start playing. Everything slows down. You can take the ecstasy and the cocaine and the crack and all that horrible stuff you shouldn't do. And, uh, it, it's really, it's kind of like just silly, you know, at this point when you play it, I could see it being kind of controversial maybe back then, but now it's just like, this is kind of dumb, but I kind of enjoy the stupid games like that. The, just products of their time. Uh, one game I've played that uh, a lot of people, and I hear more people talking about it, wish would come back is uh, the Onimusha series. Oh, yes. And uh, I decided to play a little bit of the first one on my PS2 and uh, had, had a really good time. You know, uh, man, it's been, it's been a long time. We got four titles. I didn't even remember the fourth one really coming out. Uh, it, it's a game that you kind of some people forget about, some people kind of clamor for because it's been a long time since we've had one. Uh, PS2 was the last system; it totally skipped the PS3 gen, except in Japan. They had some game that came out, but it wasn't anything really to do with the series. I, I can't remember what it was. It was like a day planner game, maybe something like that. Oh, yeah. Something just uh, kind of off the wall. But that's one I'd love to see, you know, either some HD redos of them or just a new one in the series. Uh, It's been a long time. Uh, I also picked up a Golden Axe Beast Rider. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I I mean, (laughs) I I heard it was bad. That's kind of why I bought it. It was like three bucks. 
Um, I'm hoping, I don't know, maybe it's one of those like so horrible I get some kind of sick thrill out of it. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't try it yet, so uh, that's on the list. And I also get this kind of fun-looking mountain bike game on the PS2. I, I don't I remember seeing this. I remember the Dave Mirrors and the, the ones like that, but this is just some mountain bike. and It, it looked kind of cool. I picked it up, and as I was telling you during our break, River City Tokyo Rampage. Uh, it's a new game came out on the 27th. Uh, I think you say you can get it on Amazon. Uh, Play Asia has it. You know, there is a physical release. I haven't seen it anywhere in stores. I didn't see it on like GameStop's website. Uh, it's on the Nintendo eShop, which is where I downloaded it from. I had to erase some stuff uh, to make some room. But uh, everything I hear about it, it's just a lot like you know classic River City Ransom. If you're a fan of that, uh, I imagine it takes place in Tokyo because that's in the title. But uh, you know it, it has a good look to it from what I've seen. I like the screenshots, and I'll be talking about that next episode because I'm looking forward to playing that actually tonight. It's downloaded and ready to go. And then uh, other than that, I just been uh, been catching up on some Gotham. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that don't like that show. Personally, I I love it. Uh, going through season two, I missed an episode when it was airing on Hulu, and uh, I just didn't want to go forward since I missed that one episode. But since season three started, they put all the old episodes on Netflix. So I'm um, finishing up season two and getting ready to start season three. Uh, nice. Not really too into superhero you know, movies and everything, but uh, this is the main comic book related thing that I just, I don't know, I fell in love with it. Uh, I'm not like a big Batman comic reader, so there's, you know, not anything for me to get mad about. Uh, as far as I know, I guess it's just like its own little universe, but uh, I, I, I fucking love it, so. Did you, uh, speaking of that, did you ever watch Jessica Jones? Uh, no, I did that, not. That's another show you need to check out. And I know the Luke Cage show uh, mm-hmm. just came out, and I've heard good stuff about that, and I'm probably definitely going to check that out. I still need to go back and and finish and, and watch the Daredevil, and I heard about Jessica Jones. I, something about the, the TV shows, uh, I just kind of dig a little bit more, I think, than the movies. Well, the reason why I mentioned Jessica Jones is because uh, you were talking about how you weren't into that many of the superhero stuff. That's kind of what I like about Jessica Jones. I mean – she is a superhero, she's a mutant, and she's got special powers. But it's more of a noir-style uh, TV show. Kind of, kind of probably in the same vein as Gotham, where, you know, there's mysteries, and you're trying to figure out. There's a lot of conniving and, you know, betrayal, and it's a little bit more realistic. It's not, you know, someone running around in spandex saving the world. It's more, yeah. it's more like, you know, this chick's in New York, and you, you see shit go down. That, I just finished uh, season one um, about a week or so ago, and yeah, we're probably going to start, uh, me and my girlfriend, we're probably going to start watching Luke Cage soon, but we've been watching uh, Penny Dreadful as well, we've been watching that, and uh, that's a really good series as well. It, we're already in season two, but that, that's that's a little I've been watching lately now. I, I would recommend too, uh, my, my wife got me to watch this uh it's a cartoon rick and morty oh dude have you seen this oh my god it's amazing i love yeah, rick and morty i mean I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh regular show i like a lot of ones like that my wife you know we watched adventure time and she kind of said it's kind of like adventure time but really fucked up and yeah i just started watching you, you can see where a lot of people that make these cartoons are people that you know are around our age yeah it's just definitely things you see in there but i mean uh i started watching some regular shows i had missed on hulu catching up on those and i still love that show it's a little bit nicer but i just uh i appreciate the outlandishness and uh crudeness of rick and morty as well it's so good i i love it that that's that's an, another show that i watched not too long ago and i was like so it was a show that i heard a lot of people like our friend mikey uh talks about it he loves rick and morty and uh, Devin likes Rick and Morty, and I was at um, Jamie's house, and they were all watching on Netflix. I'm like, I'm gonna sit down and watch this, and I'm, you know, it's like, oh man, let's watch another episode. This is great. That's it's a really fun show. Now, uh, with games I've been playing recently, I've been I've been kind of busy with gaming. Um, I did pick up 
uh, Assault Suit uh, Linos or Linos for uh, the PS4. It's a part of the Cybernate Cybernator series uh, for those that are familiar with it for the Super Nintendo, and it plays a lot like Cybernator. You know, you control your mech, and you, you know it's uh, kind of like a running gun. Has some like shoot 'em up kind of feels to it. It's pretty difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I saw it for like twenty bucks. I was like, Man, I was gonna wait for it to get used, but I was like, you know what? It's only twenty bucks. I'll just go ahead and get it. This is these are my kind of games anyway, so I went ahead and got it. Been playing that. Uh, been playing Psychonauts with uh, Jamie. I'd never played that before. And I started playing that on the original Xbox. That's been a lot of fun. Oh um, yeah, that's a that's a cool game. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, she's got it on the original Xbox, but she rebought it on the PS4 because it was on, I believe it was a flash sale uh, last week. And also, we've been playing uh, Ocean Horn, which Ocean Horn's that indie game on the PS4 in the vein of uh, the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. It is pretty much like a Wind Waker clone. It looks like it, sounds like it. Um, the controls are a little different. It's more of a top-down view, controlling-wise. Uh, it's not the perfect game, but it's still some fun. I, I have some issues with like the navigation because it is so cryptic about where to go, and you kind of ask NPCs to kind of see if you get a little hint, and they don't really help out. So that's one of the problems I have. Also, when you're uh, on the your ship and you're sailing, it's kind of like on a set path. Like you can't just explore. You just pick one island or another island, and then it's on that rails. And then you have like a pumpkin, a pumpkin cannon. And when things come out, you like shoot pumpkins at it, and you know barrels and stuff. It's not a bad game, definitely. I've been playing that. Now I did uh, soft mod my PSP uh, from Sean Long's video. And I've downloaded a couple of uh, games on my PSP as well. I've, um, you know, been playing a little bit of Spyro the Dragon, and I've played a little bit of um, uh, some Super Nintendo games like uh, Super Castlevania Four. You know, the essentials just to try out the the emulation and being like, "Is this? How's this work?" You know, because I'm going to be doing that very soon to uh, Jamie's PSP earlier, like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, but. I mean, other than that, I haven't really been playing too much. I feel like I've played a lot more than I have in the past, which is good considering uh, my busy work schedule. But it's been good, good times. Got to well, get into games when you can. You know, as you get older, you got to work <laughs> more and shit. So exactly. But guys, I do want to thank you for uh, taking the time to check out the newest episode of Excess Gaming Podcast. We'll be back uh, not next week, but the week after, and. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's that, And, of course, guys, if you're listening to us on uh, YouTube, be sure to check us out on iTunes or Podomatic.com. If you do check us out on iTunes, be sure to give us our, give our show a rating. It helps uh, you know, with the searches and helps people find our show and everything. So definitely, definitely check it out. As always, guys, thanks for listening. And as always, happy gaming. Have a pleasant evening, everybody. Can't get enough of Excess Gaming Podcast? Be sure to check out our audio podcast on podomatic.com. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes. And if you have a YouTube channel or podcast you'd like to share, be sure to check us out on Facebook on our group page and join the community. As always, guys, thank you so much for all the support and happy gaming.